Welcome to the Old Married Man Podcast. I am your host, Ask John, the Black Dr. Phil. This is my first episode. If you're looking at the screen going, who the hell is this guy? Then you're not in basketball world. If you're looking at the screen and you're going, how did he get this guy on his first episode? Then you are in basketball world. I'm going to let him introduce himself to you. But no Go ahead, Rob. Yeah, um, I'm Robert Jones, head men's basketball coach at Norfolk State University. Um, from Queens, New York. And, uh, South Side. You know, South Side, South Jamaica, Queens, New York. So, uh, that's, that's about it. That's the, quick, that's the quick intro. Let the people know how successful you are. Ah, man. <laughs> Come on, man. Let them know how successful you are. Uh, I mean, the, the people say, you know, I don't know. You know, some stats say that, that I'm one of the most successful coaches in the country. Um, number four in the country with win percentage and conference play. Um, I got five championships. Hey. Uh, um, I've got 188 wins in my career. Got 12 Coach of the Year awards, three National Coach of the Year awards. Tell them about the Hall of Fame. Hall of Fame in, in, in my New Paltz. Uh, I went to SUNY New Paltz College, so I got the Hall of Fame up there um, as a player, not as a coach. So, what about the uh, top 10 black coaches in the uh, United States? <laughs> yeah, they, yeah they, 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 they have you on that list the last couple of years, so um, I, guess, I, guess, I guess it's supposed to be pretty successful, I guess. Now, in full disclosure, People who are wondering how did I get Coach Jones on my first episode? He's actually my mother's only sister's only son. That's a long way of saying he's my first cousin. Because yeah. people got to be wondering how the heck did he get this guy on his first episode? I never, I never heard that before. My mother's <laughs> only sister's only son. Yep. I never heard that one before. Only child. Hold it. Let me let me yeah, clear it up. Only, only, only child. child. So that's a long way of saying first cousins. Now, I watched the last game against Howard. Mm -hmm. Y'all lost that game, the last couple of seconds. Now, y'all was up. What happened at that last play? Uh, we was up four with 24.4 seconds left. And um, then we, they, they, Howard had the ball. They came back down. They played some, you know, we, we played defense. And um, they had a shot, a three-pointer win, 13.2 seconds left. So that cut the lead to one. We had, we had the lead. We were still leading by one with 13.2 seconds left. And then um, on the inbound play to get the ball in, a uh, young man on my team threw the ball away, miscommunication. And um, they got the ball back underneath their rim. And they went and got fouled with 6.1 seconds left. And they had two free throws to, to basically win the game. And then we missed a shot with four, four seconds left. We, we had the ball back with four seconds left. Now, you had called a timeout right before that last play, right? Did you yeah, call a timeout? Yeah, so you drew up that last play? Just trying to get a play uh, drawn up, and um, the play was trying to get the ball to our, the, the best player's hands. And um, if it wasn't to him, it was going to be to our second best player. So, so who, the guy who took the shot was that the best player? Second best player. Second best player. Also, oh, he wasn't yeah. supposed to take the shot. Yeah, the, well, the first, but the best player was was kind of covered. So the next option was him. So we, they went, we went to the next option, and um, you know he missed the shot. So. Okay. Now I, I seen that I seen that game. Now I don't normally watch college games because it's low scoring. I mean, like it's sometimes it's go two or three minutes without scoring. Mm. Yeah, sometimes it's, it's low scoring. And I'm gonna I'm gonna be totally honest. My ego tells me if I practice as much as your guys practice, I can play college basketball. Mm. Uh, I mean, maybe. I no, no, I didn't say it's a fact. I'm saying my ego tells me that. Uh -oh. That when I watch amateur sports, like I watch boxing, right? Yeah. I love boxing. Boxing is my number one sport. My ego tells me if I was to practice as much as a professional uh, amateur boxer practice, I could do that. So when I watch I basketball, I do. I think the same way. In theory, but I think that a lot of people just like when, when people watch the NBA game, they be like, "Y'all can go play in the NBA." No, I see the separation between my talent in the NBA. Now I'm not going. I'm, my ego is not that big. I see the separation yeah, I between that. Like, I think a lot of people watch the NBA game and like even I watch the NBA sometimes. I'm like, "Y'all could go get a bucket in the NBA." Well, I think you could. Yeah, I mean, right, you, you six? What you six nine? Nah, six eight. Six eight. You can get a bucket. You can get a dunk. 
Yeah, so you know I mean, it's like you know, I guess. But then when you see it up close, it, it looks it looks different up close. Like it looks like you know, like I went to the game the other day. I went to the Rockets Lakers game the other day, and them dudes are huge. You know what I'm saying? Like and to I, you, and even being even being six eight, I say them dudes is huge. You know what I'm saying? Out there on the court, you know. So it's like when you watch it on TV. Even when you watch the college game on TV, even like you know, like high school kids or even other people like watch the game mm-hmm. on TV, and then it's like I tell them to come to practice, and then when you come to practice, you can see like they move a lot faster than you think they're moving. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? They like they lot strong, a lot bigger than you think they they are because you watch it from an angle that's a TV angle, and TV angles always like don't give you the full perception. Just like on the NBA, it look, it look like they don't, they ain't calling no plays or nothing really. Look like they just out there playing, but then if you're close enough. You can hear them calling a play like every single time down they call them a, a play. You know no, I mean? no, no. Let me just clarify that. I didn't say it's true. I didn't say I really could play college and basketball. I'm just saying my ego tells me I could do that. I don't think I really could. I'm just playing around. But see, now, the way that you just said it, it's like somebody, if they just come there and they haven't been practicing, just like the guys in the NBA or just like the college guy. I didn't say I could come on a college basketball court right now and play as good as a college basketball player. I'm talking yeah. about if you get me out there with you for a whole year practicing. That's what I'm saying, like that. So now, what do you do in your off season? Uh, recruit, you Re- know, um, uh, follow my son around on, on his AAU journey and basketball journey. Okay, now we're going to talk about Justin Jones and how that you know you have a son named the same name as my son Justin. I, we're going to talk about that in a minute. Is that a coincidence or it just happened? To, that's a coincidence? Yeah, because I wanted his name to be Jalen, but uh, uh, my other lovely cousin, Lakia, took it before I, before I, I had a son. And well, you could have named him Jalen still. Uh, I wanted to change it. I, I, I wanted to change it. Next baby. Next baby, then. Nah, ain't no more of that. Ain't no more next baby? Okay, so you just do, do recruiting. Recruiting camps, stuff like that, you know, so. So where do you recruit the kids from? All over the country. I mean, you know, um, you know, Virginia, of course, but it's all, all over the country at this point. So you just fly around the country. How do you know where the players are at that you want to recruit? There's different events that, that already kind of like targeted, you know, that's out there that you already know is going to be a good event. So you kind of go to those good events. So if you hear about a kid that's like um, supposed to be good or, you know, whatever the case may be, then you kind of try to seek you go and, and, and see him in person. But um, in this day and age, a lot of times the stuff is done on video, so you can do a lot of stuff on video. You know, I don't really have to go, you know, in person as much, but it's always good because it's the same way I talk about, like, talking about the NBA and college. It's like sometimes you see, like, a video of a kid, they look really good because it's, everybody highlights never show them missing a shot. You know, nobody highlights showing them missing a shot. True. You got to go see them in person because, you know, you got to see those highlights really uh, translate to, like, his whole game. You know, so so if you go down there and you meet the kid and you see him, like, do he automatically know who you are, or like, do you have on his shirt? Do, do, uh, like, how do he know like you're serious that you really coach Jones from Norfolk State? How do you know that? I mean, yeah, usually when you're recruiting, you got on your recruiting gear, you know, like you know your your, your, your team stuff, so they know, you know, they'll know who you are, but. Um you know, it's just about serious, you know, just try to, like, you know, talk to them and let them know you're serious, you know. So, I'm assuming these are high school kids? High school, Juco, you know, whatever. So, then you meet their parents? Is that how you get in touch with their parents next? Yeah, a lot of times, if they want you to get in contact with the parents. Some kids don't do their own recruiting. They got a, their own recruiter? They don't do their own recruiting. Like, they don't really, uh, you know, like, sometimes the parents aren't involved. Okay, now, how could you do that if the kids are minor? I mean, I don't know. I mean, that's a good question. <laughs> you know, they, you know, the, the legality of it ain't, ain't that serious when it comes to that. You know, like when recruiting, like you know, it ain't like you, you breaking the law recruit the kid that's a minor, you know, per se. Okay, so when, say like if the, the parent you meet the parents, have you ever met the parents, like a mom, dad, things like that? Yeah, so sometimes you meet them after you already got them though. Like you meet them like like first day of school. Oh wow. So have you ever like met like a single mom who said like, "Listen, get my kid a scholarship. I give you some booty <laughs> for four years straight. You have access to this booty. That never happened." <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, maybe, maybe it, 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 it's 
sometimes. Like, I mean, like, but, you know, it, it, it's happened before, but it's like, you know, we ain't take the kid, though. You ain't take him. So you, no. no booty for that. No, you ain't getting no booty out of that one. No, I think it's like a, it's, it's too much of a conflict of interest. You know, it's kind of hard to, you know, be a, do that. And I'm just messing to, with you. I'm just messing with you. Yeah, but so that really have happened? Huh? That really have happened before? Yeah, without question. Oh, wow. Yo, I just like I I had that question in my head like for a long time. I always wondered that did it, that actually happen? Yeah, because I mean, and you know, it hasn't happened to me like a whole bunch, but I know like you know, some of my colleagues has happened to because it's like you know, in theory, you kind of saving you saving the family a uh, a whole family. Yeah, you saving you saving them you know six figures over a college career. So, Hell yeah, that's a lot of money. Yeah. And and women are giving up booty for a light bill nowadays, so <laughs> that's a lot of money for real. <laughs> okay, so now let's talk about your son, Justin Jones. I see you on Twitter. He's doing his thing. How good is how good is he? Uh, I think he'll be really good once he hit another growth spurt, which looks like it's coming because. He wears size 13 and his hands are pretty big and stuff like that. So I think Man, that's the size I wear. He wears size 13? Yeah, I think another growth spurt is, you know, somewhere coming. Now, I don't know if it's going to come, you know, early or late, but I think it's going to come eventually. I think when, once that comes, I think that he'll be a really a, a pretty good player. I think if he gets like about 6'4", like he'll be like a really good player if he gets a 6'4". If he gets 6'4"? Yeah, he gets about 6'3", 6'4". I think he'll be a really good player. Like a really good player. Right now, he, he's a... He's a good player for what it is, you know. Um, but like, he's six feet, and he's probably like a combo guard right now. And six feet combo guard ain't really gonna make too much noise if you try to go further, you know. What I mean, mm -hmm. college, or if you're lucky enough to get a chance to go even further than college, that ain't gonna really make too much noise. So, either one, two things gotta happen: either, either he gotta grow, you know, which no one, neither one of us can control, you know, mm -hmm. or. He got to change his position to like being a more of a point guard, and we talk about that, you know, a little bit more. So people, people play him off the ball because he can shoot. So, like they they use him for his shooting ability, but it's like in the whole grand scheme of things, unless he becomes six three, six four, and just be, you know be a shooter and like guy who could drive the ball, like he gonna have to change his position to like a point guard, and then you know we'll see. Maybe a point guard he might not be as good. You know. I now, did he? Now, is, is this something that he loved to do, or is this something that you pushing him to do? Do he love basketball? Yeah, he loves to do it because, like, uh, if it was up to me, he would have started playing way earlier. Like, he didn't start playing until he was like almost ten years old. Oh wow! You know, a lot of these kids, you know, play like when they six, five, four, three, you know, saying stuff like that. Like, he ain't want no parts of that. Like, he, he, like, I used to try to get him to go to basketball camp, and he used to like not want to go. You know, he wanted to go. He wanted to go like cooking camp and stuff like that back then. Like. And, and he wanted to go like, where? Like cooking camp and stuff. Like, like it was like option, like YMCA, like yeah, just basketball camp. Well, it was like sports camp. Because wife, you know, YMCA got catered to everybody, so it's like sports camp. And of course, basketball was included in the sports camp. You know what I'm saying? And, or like cooking camp or space camp or whatever. He, he wanted to go cooking camp. Oh, okay. So it's like like for a long time he didn't, and, you know, he didn't enjoy basketball. So like I didn't, I didn't make him play because I I told I tell him all the time. I, I tell him to this day, even when I get mad at him, is that you know. If you're not gonna play the right way, like then don't play because you're gonna just people already expect you to be good because you're my son. Of course. Not really, not really knowing the whole dynamic that you just moved down here with me. They think that you built me your whole life. Now, if you would have built me with your whole life, now maybe you would be like really, really, really good. You know what I'm saying? So how long has he been with you right now? How long has he been? Two two years of change. Oh, so that's recent. Yeah. So. Yeah, so he, you know, and and the, and the two years of some change is like when he's gonna transform his whole basketball uh, trajectory. Like, so in other words, you're saying if he had been down there the whole entire time, he would be. Yeah, he would be really good, like really, really good. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause I would have put him in, you know, help them or put him in a space. And, and I can't say if you have been down here. Like, if you would have been down here and liked basketball the way he liked it, you know, so it would have been a twofold thing. But I think that the more he would have been down here, being around basketball, he would have kind of just like eventually start liking it anyway, you know what I'm saying? So, like, um, but then he would have been able to work out earlier, train earlier, stuff like that, that he would have been, you know, a really good player. Like, the stuff that, the stuff that he does now and showing his talent is actually, um, sometimes I have, to, I have to be objective and I have to, like, say, like, yo, you kind of doing your thing because you're a kid that's really behind the, like, was behind the eight ball. Like, all this stuff just really happened in the last two years for him. Like, 
when he was up in New York, no one talked about him like that. You know what I'm saying? Now mm-hmm. it's like he done really stepped it up the last two years. You know, and and now people respect him. So do you really you like do you really get on him? Like, are you really critique his game? Are you let his coach do all that? Are you, are you really involved with that? I, I don't critique it like during the game. Like I don't really say much to him during the game. I'm not one of the parents that do too much yelling and screaming from the crowd because I think that's that's silly. Like you know, like sometimes I tell him like just to play harder. Like I don't get mad at him about like you know shooting a shot or missing a shot or something like that or whatever. Sometimes like if I feel like he's not playing hard enough, I'll tell him like yo step it up, you know play harder, you know stuff like that. But as far as like really really. Berating them and doing the game, I don't really do nothing like that. Like now after the game, if I thought he played really bad, like once we get along, I might really get on him or something like that. But I don't really. I, during the games, I'm quiet for real. Like I don't really say too much. I'll clap every now and then, you know, because like for real, some of the stuff that he do, I don't really get too hyped for because we practice that, you know. What I'm mm-hmm. So it's like, so it's like it's not it's not like a big shock if he does something like make a three or, you know, or make a layup or something like that. It's like, we, we practice that stuff. So, um, now, if it's, a, if it's a big game and he makes a, a big three to, like, say, because, like, the state championship game he played, like, when I say two state quarterfinals he played in, they was down by four, and he scored eight straight to put them up four. Wow. Four. So, I clap, you know, in that, in that, like, that moment because it's like, you know, my kid, uh, you know, Help the team basically win. I mean, once they got up four, they never like got back down again. So mm-hmm. like, he basically helped them to help them win the game. You know what I'm saying? Like, because he scored eight straight points in a, a state game. So I was like into that a little bit, but like a regular layup or a regular three, I ain't into that. <laughs> like, so like, now, can he come to your job when you practice with your with your uh, students? Can he come there and practice with you guys? He don't practice with them. He like maybe if, if I got somebody that's working out. Now, now he had a point in the, of his career that like, he could he could jump in the workout. He ain't gonna mess up the workout, you know. What I mean, okay. like you know, he might not be doing it exactly like them, like as far as the speed and the accuracy. But like he could jump in the workout and not mess it up. So, yeah, like, but that's got to be awesome that he could come up to his dad's job and practice with college kids that are really ballers. I mean, that got to separate him a little bit from the the kids he played with. I think the biggest thing I tell him is like his biggest cheat code is. Is that like not really like me like helping him practice or not like that? It's like him being around, seeing other athletes and see what they go through. So like now, when he if he hopefully he get to college and oh be a college basketball, I mean you know be a college basketball player, I should say. Mm-hmm. Like hopefully he sees that like like when when his coach, whether it's me or not, you know what I mean, like tells him to go lift weights or tell him to go run, he can see why they, they tell him to do that. You know what I'm saying? Like some kids don't understand like. What's all this running, all this lifting weights, and all this stuff for? Like, yeah, what they got to do with shooting? <laughs> yeah, but he, he sees, he sees all, he sees these guys on a daily basis doing that, so he understands that. So, like, that's his biggest cheat code. It should be his understanding of why stuff is necessary. You know, so like when stuff is actionable or required of him, he ain't gonna be like frowning upon the work or dunking the work and stuff like that. It ain't really like it ain't really about the ability just to go practice. I mean, anybody can go practice. I mean, basketball is a Easy sport to practice. You go to the park and practice every day. If you yeah. Really want to. So you tell people who don't know the running part. What's the, what's that all about? The sprints and all that stuff. What what's that for? I mean, you gotta be in shape. Like you can't do nothing if you're not in shape. Like mm-hmm. I mean, like you know, like even like uh, you know, like right now, like um, you know, I, after this, I'm actually gonna go get on the peloton. After the season, I try to get back in better shape because like during the season it's hard because it's so so much going on or whatever. Mm-hmm. Traveling so after the season, like I usually like. I usually shed pounds after the season, so because like so like I know like during the season I probably gain a little back because it's like I'm not gonna be doing the same. I don't have the same like time. Like the season is like crazy, you know. what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So so with that being said, like I'll go out here and I'll mess around with my son, you know, one on one or whatever, right? You know what I mean? And of course, like yeah, I could just bully him. Like you know, really, I'm six eight, six feet. I could just bully him the whole time. Mm-hmm. But it's like I try not to do that. I try to run around like you know, really play, you know, with him and stuff like that. And um, it's tough when you're not in shape. Like, you know what I mean? Like, when you're not in the shape that you used to be. So you eat a lot of fast food or during the season? No, 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 not, not fast. I don't really eat fast food at all, but just late, like, later eating times. Oh, okay. Okay. So it's like, it, you know, it sticks to you a little differently. You know what I'm saying? Like, now, I don't never eat really fast food for real, like, at, at all too much. Like, I'm, I'll get something if I, you know, if I'm hungry. You know, I even say I'm, I'm, I'm not one of the people that go say I don't eat no fast food, mm-hmm. but I eat, I eat limited you know, fast food or stuff like that. So, 
you know, the, the hate part is like all all the people that all the great people that people uh, emulate like Kobe and LeBron and Jordan and stuff like that and whoever you know whoever's your favorite player or, you know whatever Jordan and like, all those guys are in tremendous shape because to go out there and be getting banged around for an NBA game like you know forty eight minutes and stuff like that you so you get banged around by the best athletes in the world really to be able to go and go get thirty points and twenty five and thirty a night you know what I'm saying yeah. playing eighty two games. Like you gotta be in tremendous, like you gotta be in tip top shape, and a lot of people don't understand that concept. They think it's just natural ability. Yeah, those guys are great players, but they are also in tip top. Yeah, now like you, you know, take boxing, my favorite. Teams. You take boxing, my favorite sport. They do yeah. more running, and they do about the same amount of running as they do sparring. Yeah, they do. <laughs> they run. You need boxing to be able to get. Hard. Like we have, um, like my son do box. He, he, he did boxing for a while. Like Justin did boxing for a while. It's a, I think it, it, it helped his like his confidence. It helped his, his hand speed a little bit too. Like like and I think more hand speed too. Like hand speed did help, but I think his confidence was like I think like when you know when you when you know you can fight. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You ain't you ain't really worried about doing nothing out there on the court because like if somebody want to do something, you go. You can put your hands up. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. So I think that helped his confidence, and we probably gonna start it again just to uh, continue that you know confidence. Because I mean at this point, like you know. He ain't gonna be no boxer, you know. Mm-hmm. What I mean? So like, what he's doing is really just, just confidence and keep him in shape. Because yeah. that's the thing too. Like, um, the the we we do boxing training with my team during the preseason sometimes, and like some of those days be the hardest days for them. Like, like, like you be in that hot, the hot ring and stuff like that. Like the ring is always like like people don't understand that the ring be like 115 degrees. Like, you know, like when you when you out there training. Like, so I hold on, you have a know. boxing ring at your school. In the gym? No, we go to a boxing um, center around here. Oh, okay. So, so the, the gym itself be hot because they, 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 like the thing that boxing trainers always say is that we're not gonna lose the fight to weight. So, like, they always gonna make sure you make weight. So, like, they keep it so hot. So, like, you know, you never like you like kind of burning fat while you, you know, stuff. So, like the first time we ever went there, I had to tell the guy like, "Yo, man, I can't stand it here. You got to turn this down." Like, <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. I can't stand there and watch this stuff for 150, 125 degrees, whatever it is. And I, so he, you know, he turned it down. They probably turned it down to about 90. It still was hot in there, but it was mm-hmm. like, you know, uh, they did the boxing and stuff, and the, and the boxing stuff was like some of the toughest stuff they did. Like, you know, like some of the like the the core workouts, like uh, you know, they hanging off the ring and doing core workouts and stuff like that. So I think that my team. Um, Gave a, 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 I can't say gave, but found a newfound respect for boxers that, you know, like that did. See, what I was going to say, like when you said about it gave him confidence, there's only one sport that I was actually showed a taught how to do when I was a kid, and it was boxing. Uh, I had a guy, uh, used to go to Keenum Hall, and his name was Edison Lombano. He was a professional boxer. And he took me to the side and showed me how to throw a jab. I mean, the most important thing in fight is a jab. A lot of people think it's the overhand right, the knockout punch. The most important thing is a jab. But the confidence I had being a little skinny kid in South Jamaica, Queens, knowing how to box, you just you just walk with it. You just have a different walk, a different confidence of being able to know that you're able to fight. Yeah. If you if someone attacks you or if you have to fight, so yeah. the I can imagine like this being like you know, Justin what fifteen. Yeah, 15, yeah, a little. Yeah, this, just knowing a little bit of boxing and make you feel a little bit better. Yeah. But, but it's on the basketball court or off the basketball court. Mm. I agree. I yeah. agree with that. Okay, now I don't want before we run out of time. I want to get into where you grew up at, where we grew up at. Let everybody know where we grew up at. We grew up in South Jamaica Queens, South Side, as they call it. You know, South Side, Jamaica Queens. Yeah, it ain't, you know, a lot of times people say you. I I clarify that too. I clarify that too. It's a different, um, it's a different thing. And the South Jamaica is a, is a place that, that you know, I take people there like because uh, you know when I go recruit in New York, I, like sometimes like I'm, if I'm with somebody, I try to take them where I'm from so they could you know understand like my sister coaches or whatever stuff like that. But um, you know, South Jamaica Queens is very de- deceptive because like you know you'll drive by like houses really you know what I'm saying yep. like. And, and and it's like you know nobody thinks that, like this is the hood because it's like everything is a house. But exactly. Like, 
Some of the people in those houses are, you know, are, are savages. You know what exactly. I'm saying? Like, <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? You can't, like, so it's like, it don't really look like the hood. And certain, like, now, certain places like Tufton Boulevard and stuff like that look like the hood. But other places, when you leave, like, Tufton Boulevard, you know, you go up or down, like, it don't really look like the hood. You know? Now, tell so, tell the people the places that you remember living at in South Jamaica, Queens. I lived on 115, 143rd, uh, you know, um, there. I lived on 108th. Uh, Avenue, when I, when I say, uh, when, you know, usually people, uh, you know, the first number that people say usually is the Avenue, the next person is the, pump, is the street. Exactly. You know, so, like, I lived on 108th Avenue, 157th Street. Now, let, let, let people know, that's right around the corner from 40 Projects. Yeah, right around the corner from 40 Projects. So, of course, you know, that was different because, you know, like, I mean, as soon as you come out the door, you know, you know. That corner store. That corner, yeah, corner store. store. The 48 Park, you know what I mean? Right across you the know, street. Yeah, you couldn't just, you know, when you when you went to 48 Park, you had to be ready for whatever, whatever, you know? Exactly. <laughs> there was 48 Park, it was different, you know? So, um, I lived there, I lived on um, 108 and, and let's see, no, not 108, I'm sorry, 157 and 110 Avenue, I lived there. Don't forget, you know, something. Yeah, yeah, I lived on something and Lakewood, basically. Yeah. Hell yeah. Crow's yeah. Funeral Home, next to Crow's Funeral Home. Yeah, something Boulevard, Lakewood, right there. Um, those are four places I lived at in South Jamaica. And then I lived in Hamels Projects in Far Rockaway, which is a whole different. Uh, Yo, I hate it when y'all lived out in Hamels. I hated Hamels, man. Like for the people who who don't know about Queens, there's a couple of places in Queens that even people from Queens don't like to be. I don't like the I don't like uh, what's the projects where Nas grew up at Queensbridge. Queensbridge. I don't like Queensbridge houses. Yeah. I, I don't like that area. I don't like Far Rockaway. I, I don't know what's something about Far Rockaway, man, I just don't like. In Hamels, I didn't like Hamels at all. Now, when you yeah. was, how long did you stay there? Uh, Hamels, I went there, I think right before I went to college, I think. If I'm not, because I know, I'm, like, uh, yeah, because like, uh, when I was at Brooklyn Tech, I was like coming back to 115 and 143rd, like usually, like, you know. So you was at Hamels right before you went to New Paul's? Yeah, I think this was like my last year of high school or or like all that right before I went to college, I think. But you didn't really, but you didn't hang out in Hamels though. You didn't socialize out there. No, I, I used to come back to Jamaica. Because mm -hmm. like, I, like, cause like, I mean, everything was, I, I went to, still went to the barbershop in Jamaica. I still like, all my friends was in Jamaica, so. So you basically just, li friends you just lived, you just lived there. You just lived there. Yeah, I ain't trying to make friends in Far Rockaway. Yeah. Know? Like I there was nothing about Far Rockaway they wanted me to make friends about it. So it's like I just lived there. You know, when I went out, I went out. When I when I when it's time to come back, I stayed inside. You know? Is that the time you had the uh, the Benz coupe? Yeah, yeah. So it was crazy. Somebody else out there had a Benz coupe too, and I think let's just say the other person out there who had the Benz coupe wasn't in the same walk of life that I was in. You know? Uh oh, so, that's dangerous. You know, like, people used to look at me all the time, and they used to like. Even like one time, I, I, people used to wave and stuff like that. I'm like, what are they waving at? But they used to think it was the other dude. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. we both had a silver joint. You know, the, the, the only coupe. thing that was different was like, his was, was a 320, mine was a 430. So it was like, but nobody could see that from afar because it looked almost exactly the same. So you had the Biz Coop even before you got successful. You had the Biz Coop when you was in New Paul's, right? No, I didn't have any car when I was in New Paul's. I, I didn't get my first car until I was 25. Oh, okay. I thought you had, okay. So you didn't get the, the, the coupe until you got out of high, uh, out of college. Yeah, maybe twenty, maybe twenty four, maybe twenty four. Twenty four. Yeah, okay. Twenty four. My first car was a Nissan Altima. Yeah, I remember the Altima. Yeah, and then I got the the, the coupe after that. Like that was my. Oh well, no, no, I had an MDX, like the Acura MDX, and then the coupe. Cause yeah, cause the coupe I came down here with. I came down to to um, Norfolk State with the coupe. So you still had the coupe yeah. when you came down there for for the first time? Yeah, yeah, I had the coupe. Yep. Yeah. So it was like um. Yeah, it was like, I had my first car. I had my first car for a long, a long time, man. A long, I didn't have my license for a long time, for real. Wow. Now, tell people about New Paul's. New Paul's is upstate New York? Yeah. How, how was New Paul's? You liked it up there? Yeah, New Paul's was great. I mean, New Paul's was um, a place that I never had thought about going to because I thought about, like, you know, playing basketball and I'm going to go to St. John's or something. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you going to go local. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or Syracuse or something like that or whatever. But so I never really thought about going to New Paul's. But when situations happened, you know, like I just, you know, they offered me the opportunity to come up there and play. So um, I went up there and it was a great, it was, it was great. I mean, it was, 
I've been a lot of people that still my friends to this day. You know, I, I was able to honestly um, interact with different races that I probably didn't interact with uh, on a day to day basis in, in, the, in the neighborhood. You know, because I mean, the neighborhood like a melting pot. Yeah, the neighborhood was black. You know, yeah. like, I mean, that's what it was. Like maybe some Spanish people or whatever, but up there in New Falls, you know, you got black, white, Spanish, Chinese, you know, stuff like that. Like now, in, in high school, we, I did have some. Um, I had a lot of Asian people, you know, mm -hmm. stuff like that. But um, in high school, but it was like, I mean, it was, it was a weird high school. It was like mostly black and Asian, which was weird. Like, what high school you went to? Huh? What high school you went to? Brooklyn Tech. Okay. Brooklyn Tech High School. So it was weird um, with, with that situation. Like, uh, it wasn't really like a whole bunch of white people. It was like black Asian people, black Asian, black mm -hmm. Asian, you know, and stuff. So, um, now I skipped so over, I skipped over something. I want you to talk a little bit about Lost Battalion. A little bit about Ajax Park tournaments. Um, I mean, those places was like tournaments that you know, like places that people played at Lost Battalion Hall, and uh, people would go there like on Sundays and play uh, stuff like that. And and, and Ajax, you know, was was um, uh, you know uh, tournaments that used to happen. You know what I'm saying out there. So Ajax for a long time was the tournament place that you. Uh, that you played at, you know, you either played at Ajax or you played at, at Lincoln Park and stuff like that. So, um, you know, that's what that's what it was with that. Okay, so now how did you get to New Paul's? Uh, I got to New Paul's by um, uh, what, what happened in New Paul's? Uh, um, I didn't play my senior year of high school, so um, I went to like a camp and like um. The coach at New Paul's, you know, who was getting, he was actually getting the job at New Paul's. He wasn't even there. Like, he got the job at New Paul's. And he saw me at the camp, and he liked me a lot. And uh, he asked me to come visit, and I didn't really want to come visit. So, but I did go visit. And then when I went there, I was like, yo, this is cool, you know. And so, I just said, I'm, I'm going to come. Now, I remember, I don't know if you remember this. I drove your mom and all your stuff to New Paul's in my Acura Integra. Do you remember that? Yeah, I have a lot. I have a lot of stuff back there. <laughs> yeah, my Acura Integra. You know, it's a coupe, yeah, that so was it wasn't a lot of stuff. It was a hatchback. I meant to say a hatchback. It was blue, right? Yeah, blue, yeah. the blue one. Now, New Paul's. What I remember about New Paul's is your parties. You were doing your thing with parties. And how did that happen? How did you start doing parties up there? I think because I saw other people doing it, I was like, I could do this better. You know what I mean? Like, for real. Like, I think, like, once I got there and I started to get to know people and people started getting to know me and, you know, being a part of the basketball team, you know, stuff like that, your popularity grows and everything like that. And then, you know, um, you know, going to parties, of course, and, you know, you meet people, you know, stuff like that. So I was like, yo, we just need to do it. Me and my roommate, I was like, we just need to do, do these ourselves, for real. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Um, cause people was making some money, like, you know, and I, I already have no money. So I'm like, hell, this, this was a place, a way to make money, you know, and, and a way that like, that like, it wouldn't be no, you know, I ain't gonna get no trouble, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. like that. So well, let's go a party. So one, so we finally, I think we took some of our refund check one time and, um, got enough money for like a, a venue, you know what I'm saying? Put enough money together for a venue, a DJ and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, mm -hmm. like and um. We, we set up the party, and the party went went well. And so you we, made money the first time. You made money. Huh? Did you make money the first time? Yeah, that's why we did it again. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> we did it again, and we did it again, and did it again, and kept and it just kept going and going and going. So there were parties, the concerts, and now I remember, so. I remember the first time I came up to one of your events. It was Fifty Cent. Oh yeah. He was doing Wangsta. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Only thing I knew about was that he was from Southside Jamaica Queens. Yeah. I didn't know who he was. You know, you told me he was hot. I didn't know. And I remember how many people you think was in that in that in that venue that night. Oh, it was over. Like I mean, and the venue was like a club, so it was like, it was a, like over nine hundred people in there. But the thing is. It would have been way more than that. I mean, I don't know where we would have put them at, but like we would have probably packed them in some subway. It probably would have been fire hazard. It probably was a fire hazard that night. Too. It probably was. But like it would have been way more people. But remember, that's when Jam Master J got shot, and people didn't think that he was coming because he was canceling every show. But he didn't cancel my show because my show was outside of the city, so he didn't cancel that show. So like leading up to that, what happened was was that like when the, when he pulled up with his with the, with the armor SUVs and stuff like that was that. People was was on their phones calling their people like, yo, he's actually really here. 
You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then, like, so people who were, like, close by, probably within a 15, 20 minute radius, was, like, trying to run there to get there. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, people, like, we went through a whole thing that people didn't think he was coming, for real. Like, so. Damn, I didn't remember. So that was right after Jay got killed. So the fault was, like, four days. Oh, wow. Because remember, Jim was we got, Jim was got killed, like, close to Halloween, I believe. Right? October 30th. Yeah. That party was November 9th, 2002. Oh, wow. So, so 10 days after he got killed. Wow. So, he was canceling everything. You know what I mean? So, people, people, you know, he was, he was canceling, you know, they, you know, one, I guess they say he was sad. Two, you know, they said he was, you know, fearful of different things, you know, threats on his life. Because they thought he was a target too, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, I guess, like I said, I guess because it was, it was outside the city, and it really wasn't that far outside the city. But, no, know, it wasn't that far. Get you, get you, right? Yeah. But it's like, um, he came, though. And, like, like, what DJ? It was a who kid? DJ who kid got on the on the, on the thing and you know dropped the, the gun cock, the click click. You know what yep, I mean? Like, yep. Yep. Like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like it was like, oh man, he really, really, like he really, really here. You know what I'm saying? Now tell the, tell people. Yeah, it wasn't even, like it was a fake stage for real. Like he was on. Tell people back then how cheap it was to book Fifty Cent. How cheap was it to book Fifty Cent back then? It was ten thousand. It was ten thousand dollars when I booked him. Ten thousand dollars. Yeah, ten thousand. How much you think you can book him for right now? Man, you can go for half a mil, something like that. Two fifty, half a mil. You know, Damn. I mean, depending on where. Like sometimes overseas, he still be getting like close to a million overseas, though. Like because like he really, he's like an international superstar. Like, he's probably bigger overseas than he is domestically. You know what I'm saying? Like overseas, people still like treat him like he Michael Jackson or something. You know? Yeah. And and, and, and domestic domestically, I mean, you know, like I can't say people don't think too much about him, but like. He ain't the first person that promoters are booking. You know what I mean? Okay, okay. You know, like, so. Now, tell people about Southside Entertainment. Southside Entertainment was created from the stuff that we talked about, from parties and stuff like that. Uh, like, also, I was in charge of the um, the, uh, the concerts at New Falls. So, what I did was, I was like, you know, once again, I always kind of had, like, a good business mind or try to figure out things a little bit because... You know, you know, growing up, you know, I, I, mean, I have a lot, so I, so I always figured, like, I had to always try to figure out how to eventually get something. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because the something wasn't coming um, <laughs> with, with like my mom and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. The, the something was never coming. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, it was never happening. So I used to see that, like, I'm doing all these concerts. I'm, I'm organizing these concerts for the school, and the school is, you know, you know, get three thousand, two thousand people to come. You know, at you know, I don't know back then, like ten dollars a ticket or you know whatever it was, fifteen dollars. Mm-hmm. Because you know, schools ain't really charge that much. But they, they think it wasn't really about like making a lot of money. It was just like kind of just getting their money back so they could do another event. You know what I'm saying or whatever. So, but I'm like, yo, if I could get two, three thousand people to come for you know fifteen dollars. You know what I'm saying or whatever, and and be able to get an artist because I mean that's the only reason it came was because of artists. So I kept all the artist contacts I made when I was doing the stuff at school. Mm-hmm. And I kept like, you know, the process that, you know, I, I knew the process of how to do it and everything like that. So when I got out of school, I took all the information and started my own company. Wow. <laughs> that's wow. what I did. Like, I took the, so I basically, I took the information from New Falls. As I said, New Falls is great to be. New Falls changed my life in many different ways. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So um, I took all the information from that I had as a concert um, chair at New Falls and just kept those relationships and started my own business. So that's why I talked to my own parties, my own concerts and stuff like that, all from the stuff that I learned at Hoopals. Now, Southside Entertainment, um, you hired me to pick up a couple of artists. I <laughs> met, um, what's the girl from uh, Puppy's show when he made them walk to get the cheesecake? Babs, you, Babs. I, made, I met Babs. Yo, when I picked her up, I never forget, I picked her up and her, her, I guess it was a bodyguard. Yeah. He had a gun in the car. I was like, oh, damn. Like, he had a gun in the car. <laughs> uh, I think I met June Balloon from Bad Boy. Yeah, yeah. I met June Balloon. But the biggest artist I ever met because of Southside Entertainment <laughs> Rick Ross. was Rick Ross. Yeah, that was, that, was, that, was, that was a bad night, though. Rick Ross, I got to tell people, it was, it, it, it was a good night at first, right? Yeah. Now, they was mad as hell at you because I picked him up from LaGuardia Airport. And you gave me a van to pick him up, and it had clear windows. There was no tint on the windows. Do you remember that? No, I don't remember that part, no. Yeah, there was no tint on the windows. He was mad as hell, right? And he said, who sent you with this truck to pick me up with um, with our tent? 
And I was like, this is what they gave me to pick you up with. So he called his man from, that lived in New York, right? And his man met us somewhere out of LaGuardia, right? And he got inside his car. But all the, the entourage stayed with us. Oh, yeah, I don't remember that. Yeah, the entourage w stayed with us, but he got into like a kind of like Escalade with black windows. So, in other words, we was like, had a little caravan following each other. Because I had the Lexus, I had that van, and he had the Cadillac. So, that night you had him booked, I think, for two different shows, right? Yeah. You had him booked upstate somewhere for a concert. Yeah. We went up there, and I remember um, he let us get on stage. He let us come on stage. He was, he was good. He let us get on stage. But the bad part was, we said, let's go to Brooklyn. We got another show in Brooklyn. Yeah. Right? We get to Brooklyn, and we're in the parking lot. Uh, and I remember started. the police started coming around, looking in the van. Right? And they seen the open liquor bottle. Because when we went upstate to the concert, they gave him mad liquor. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they seen the open liquor, and they wanted to search the car. And guess what was in the car? A gun. Yeah. They waited till they came out of the show in Brooklyn, and they had all of us up against the car trying to figure out whose gun it was. And I called you. Remember I called you? Yeah, you called me. I, I, called, I said, wow, what's going on, man? Yo, these niggas got a gun. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, come to find out, one of the guys he was with was an like off-duty like off police, police officer. And it, it, the gun was legal. Yeah. But they just did, they were supposed to check in to the precinct and let the let the precinct know, we in the, we in the area, we going to a show, this dude got a gun, and he didn't do that. Yeah. He didn't do that. He didn't do what he was supposed to do. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was crazy. Yeah, it was, it was, cra it was crazy for a minute. It was crazy for a minute. Cause he, yeah, I, remember you, I remember you hit me, he was like, yo, what you, what you got me into? I was like, what you talking about, man? <laughs> Cause when I hit you, it had to be like 3 o'clock in the morning, right? Yeah, yeah, that was a crazy night. I, you, I, I think I picked somebody else up. I don't remember who else I picked up. But I think I picked up somebody else. It was around like that bad boy time when Puppy was, uh, you know, doing all that. So, so for them shows, did you really make money doing like Rick Ross and all that stuff? Bad money and stuff. Yeah, those shows. Yeah, 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 those shows was good. Now back then, how much was Rick Ross? I mean, that was that was later, you know, because like. 50 Cent was 2002, you know, Rick Ross was like 2010, so that was 10. Ross changed a little bit, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. so Rick Ross was, was, at the time, I remember exactly, he was $50,000 at the time. Oh, damn. Yeah. So you was making money, like, after the 50000 you was making a profit? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Damn. So now, I know you, once you became, um, you know, the coach, you first you started off as a consistent coach in Norfolk, right? Yeah. Okay, so once you became this uh, coach, you stopped doing all that party stuff, Southside Entertainment. Yeah, pretty much. Like, I mean, I, you know, at first I was still like kind of dibbling, dabbling different things, but um, as time went on, it just became like, you know, it just it was just like too too much going on with the with the basketball side to even like really um, work. It's like, I mean, the shows like you know, people don't realize like it's like people don't realize how much work going to basketball. There's a lot of work to go to shows too. Like, you gotta you know you gotta connect a lot of guys behind the scenes. But you gotta promote it. You know what I mean? Because it's like it don't matter who you got. If, if nobody knows that the person is coming, nobody going to be there. Exactly. You know? so, so you got to promote it. You know, you got to, you know, whatever, whatever. And, you know, keep keep going with that. You know, running the radio, doing this, doing that. So, you know, it's a lot with them shows, you know. So, like, those promoters that be doing those shows, man, like, you know, um, credit to them because I know it's entertainment for the people. But people don't realize, like, how much work it really is to, to put on, a like, a... A concert, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like mm -hmm. a, even a, even a party is tough, but like to really put on a concert, where you're trying to get thousands of people to come. That's the only way you're gonna make some money if you get thousands of people to come. You know what I mean? Like so, it's really, hard, you it's just hard to get thousands of people in one room together. So you just don't have time for that anymore. Yeah, I don't really do that no more. Nah, like you know. So I mean, I still talk to some people every now and then, like so you know. But like, I ain't really you know doing nothing. Else. Now the way these artists are now, as much as they want. How big do the, the arena have to be to make a profit? Like, you if you think about the way you... That's why, like, you, you don't see a lot of, like, like, the way that the, the, the game is now, 
outside of like clubs and stuff, um, you know, only major companies are doing these artists because you got to go to a major arena, and most people ain't got that, don't got that money, you know, to do that. You know, these these arenas are not cheap. Mm-hmm. You know, and then the artists are not cheap. So it's like you need some real capital to to really put on a show these days. You know. So you need like a what, like a quarter of a million for the uh, how much like a little baby, like two fifty. Yeah, two fifty five. I think he up more than that. Like now, they like four, five hundred now. Oh my god! Yeah, so it's like, and then the risk. You know, these companies can take a risk like that because somewhere they, they probably had a couple for success, you know, successful shows. So it's like, you know, they, they, they lose a little. Like the average person that worked, one average person don't got four or five hundred thousand just to put up. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and then two shows are risky because anything can happen. You know, what I'm saying? if it rains, like, yeah, anything if, can happen. Mm-hmm. Now, granted, some of those major shows. It probably don't rain. It probably don't matter if it rains, sleet, or snow. Like people still gonna come to see Chris Brown. You know. What I mean? Yeah, that's they true. Come with, they gonna come with their umbrella and stuff. True. You know? But uh, if you're just doing like a regular artist or whatever, like you know, it's, it's, it's risky though. It's Have risky. you ever did an R and B? I don't remember you ever doing R and B. Yeah, I've done. Uh, I've done Brandy. Oh, Brandy. Uh, yeah, Brandy. It was Brandy. I did Brandy and Bobby V together. Um, Bobby Valentino. How was that? That, that, that was good. I did. Um, uh, Slim from 112. I did um, Keisha Cole. So oh, wow. I did a Vaughn. Now, was that in New York? Oh, that was, where was that? Uh, that was actually, Bobby V and Brandy was down here in Virginia. Um, a Vaughn was in Daytona Beach. Keisha Cole was in uh, Daytona as well. It's like, they're, they're together actually. And, one, and Slim from 112 was actually, it was in Virginia too. So Slim, hold it, he 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 does shows by himself. Well, when he had went solo, you know. Oh, I didn't know he went solo. Solo. Yeah, so he was doing shows by himself, like the So Fly record. So that that was him solo. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. So now that, like, you know, you're a big successful coach in uh, HBCU, do you aspire to like leave there and like do like a Deion Sanders and go to like a white school? I mean, I think all the whole time when, when opportunity presents itself, you gotta listen. You know, that's why I don't think nobody, I can't be, if you're really mad at Deion Sanders, you're a fool, because at the same time, like I tell people all the time, you know, and Deion, even though he claims, you know, he ain't doing it for the money or whatever, whatever, because he already, you know, his, I think his net worth is like, you know, I think 30 million is all that his net worth is, so, he, you know, he got money, but at the same time, it took him, you know, Deion Sanders is 50 something years old, so it took him 50 something years to get 30 million dollars, right? Yeah. The, the University of Colorado offered him 30 million for, 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 for five years. Damn. You know, so I was like. Why would you know if, if somebody offer you your net worth? <laughs> if you said, exactly. You know, exactly. Like, why would you do it? And he don't mean why would you do it? And then the other thing too is that with HBCUs, um, a lot of HBCUs can't can't match the same salaries that you do. You know that, they, that people do. So the thing I challenge people is that you know, so say if you make it thirty thousand dollars a year, you know, whatever, right? Mm-hmm. You know, hey, if somebody offers you one hundred eighty thousand dollars a year, yes, you're gonna be like. Nah, I'm gonna stay with this thirty because I'm gonna do it for the culture. Hell no, like, that, hell no. Like you lying to yourself for real. You know what I mean? I'm gone. Mm-hmm. Something like that was like a little bit closer. You know what I mean? Somebody say, hey, you know, you make it thirty. I'm gonna already offer you forty, forty-five. Maybe man, you know, and you probably still would do it too. But you, you might, you, you might be more inclined. Like y'all comfortable here? I'm cool. You know? Yeah, yeah, whatever. yeah, yeah. You know, but if somebody offer you that, you make it thirty and offer you one eighty. So like, you know, he was making. I think, you know. um, Three hundred thousand at Jackson State, if I'm not mistaken, you know, and then they offer offer him five million, six million, like you know, forget about six times. I mean, you're talking about you know, fifteen, twenty, almost twenty times times your salary. Yeah, you know? yeah. Like, and, and like I said, Dion can say only one day. But yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, Dion don't have to work another day in his life, probably. Exactly. Know? But at the same time, he's he's not going to turn down another thirty million either. Though. Hell no. So, uh, so what you're saying in a, uh, you out of there if you could, if somebody offers you some crazy money. I mean, I think you got to look at your family, you know, like you got to think about your family, you know, too, like, because it's like, somebody, off, if somebody offers me, let's say, you know, $2 million to go coach somewhere, you yeah. know, a you know, million, yeah, million and a half dollars to go coach somewhere, whatever. Okay. Is that like, it's not, I'm not only going to help change my immediate life, but I'm going to be able to change my son's life. Your grandkids. Your, your grandkids. Yeah, because it's like, <laughs> You know, the money that they make, yeah, you look at it per year, but it's really like, I look at it in totality. You know, somebody, there's like, most contracts are like five years. You know, like, that's like kind of almost a standard contract. So, really that, 
two million dollars a year is really ten million overall. You mm-hmm. know, that's the money's gonna give you. Um, to a certain extent, you know, what I mean, I mean, you know, you, you get fired, you might get bought out, or something like that. You know, so it might be a little less, but and and it's gonna be close to you know ten million dollars. Right, so that just changes everything, you know, for you. You know, so I was like, you, I don't think you could be mad, I don't, and I, I didn't really understand the backlash he got. I guess because people was taking out of context what he was saying, like you know, he was talking so much about raising the HBCU culture, you know, raising the mm-hmm. HBCU visibility and stuff like that, which I think that he did in this short period of time, you know. He did. He did. Now, I think some people take it out of context that, that he was saying, that I'm going to stay here forever and do this. You know? Hell no, he didn't mean that. He didn't mean now, that. I don't think he meant that, mm. you know, and I think people, like, were so disappointed that they thought that he meant that. And I, like, I'm like, oh, I, I ain't take it from that from what he was saying. I was just taking that he was just trying to say, yo, HBCU is a viable to go to, you know what I mean, and stuff. But let me and say this for the for the record: if you leave and you start going and making a million dollars and uh, all that extra, a lot of money that you just talked about, yeah, I will come. Forget that part. I sat in like college basketball. I love college basketball. Uh, I will come there and just put air in the balls and just <laughs> and help the the guys tie these sneakers and stuff like that. And I'll be on your coaching staff doing that. Yeah, no, I got you. For real. If you, if, so, in other words, you, are you saying that every year you think about, or you like take offers, or you 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 seek out different uh, schools? No, I think at, at this point, I don't seek anybody really. At this point, like they, they kind of like come and ask me if I'm interested. Oh, know, okay. About different things, like um, you know, and, and whether they always offer me the job or not, you know, they don't, you know, but they want to gauge my interest in. Just like they gauge my interest, they probably gauge five people interest and then make a decision out of those five people, you know? Okay. Stuff like that. So, um, uh, yeah, year to year, like, you know, like last year, I had like four schools this year, uh, three, four schools that were interested in stuff like that. So, you know, every year is going to be, well, I can't say that. Every year, as long as you have a success, if people going to come. So do you, you do know, interviews or they just go by what they know about you? Like, yo, this guy is the man. Uh, do you have, do you still do interviews? Yeah, I do interviews, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, but it's like, they go by, like, I mean, they you go straight to the interview. There's no, people would be, be asking, like, do you apply? Like, there's no, there's no applying for mm-hmm. a job. You know what I mean? Like, they don't, like, they come seek you. They don't, you know. Your talent is, you, 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 you applying with your talent that they yeah, already you, know about. You don't go and just be like, yo, I want this job at Kentucky or, or whatever. Like, hey, I'm interested. Can I, can I go to, can I go to HR? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, like, mm-hmm. Nah, it ain't no HR, my man. You know what I'm saying? Like, it ain't none of that. Like, it's just like, yo, you know, they, they come get you. Now, let me tell you this. Being that you my cousin, of course I knew you were successful. I know that, right? Yeah. But I didn't know how famous you was until I was on Twitter. I haven't been on Twitter in 10 years. So I went back when Elon Musk uh, purchased Twitter, right? And I seen a picture of a guy. And you, and he said, Coach Jones was gracious enough to take a picture with me in the airport today. And I said, damn, it's like that? Like, I didn't know people was like walking up to you, strangers saying, hey, can I take a picture with you? I didn't know it was like that. We got to start hanging out more. <laughs> I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's still a little weird sometimes. Like, I mean, it, it don't happen everywhere in the country, but it definitely happened in some circles that like, you don't expect it to happen. Where were you at that when that happened? Where were you when you took that picture on Twitter? Was that what? Where were you at when that took that picture on Twitter? The uh, one I'm talking airport. about. Like I forgot, I forgot my airport at this point. Oh, okay. Airport at six, six in the morning. Mm-hmm. And the guy asked me to take a picture, and then like you know, so like it was like, all right, I'll do it. You know, I'll take a picture. But it's like, um, do you enjoy yeah, that? Like I said, no, it don't happen super often. You know, it, it depends on where I'm at. But it's like, like it does happen in weird places. Like even like I was in Atlanta. One time, just like at a restaurant, um, like in the like the little lounge area, like the lobby. I guess it's not really lounge, but lobby lounge area. You know, this guy just chilling there, just um, I think I was waiting for somebody or something. I forgot what it was, or maybe waiting for an Uber or something. You know, mm-hmm. and um, a guy just came out of nowhere and was like, "Yo, Coach Jones from Norfolk State." And I'm like, "Uh, yeah, that'd be that's me." That's who I am. You know, and he had actually a picture. He was just like, "Yo, great job, keep doing, you know, keep doing what you're doing and stuff like that." And it's like, um. If it's something like that, it'd be like a little weird. That even though it happens, it's still a little weird for me because, you know, like I, I just don't be viewing myself that way. Even like 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 my my, my sister coach, um, it was one point doing homecoming, which 
you know, I know homecomings, a lot of people, you know, at the school, alumni or whatever, you know, blah, blah, blah. So people were, like, asking for, like, to talk pictures and stuff like that. I'm like, I told him, I was like, man, I don't want to take more pictures, man. Like, this is, this is stupid to me, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, he's like, yo, you got to understand, man. He's like, yo, you know, you might not look at it like that because you don't, you don't, you don't look at yourself, you know, like, like, like that, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, but it's like that. People who like only seen you on TV or only seen you there, like they, they like, they're like, yo, you like two feet away from them, you know? Exactly. So like, exactly. They, they want to like, yo, shoot their shots for uh, to talk to you or a picture or something like that. And I'm like, okay, I can understand that a little bit, but I, but I still, I still put myself in like, you know, like, okay, LeBron James walked by, yeah, get a picture, like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like, it shouldn't be like, yo, you try to get a picture. Even I went to Houston, it was, it was crazy, crazy in Houston too. I'm like, yo. now, now, let me ask you this. What makes a good coach? Because, like, when I watch, like, say, like, NBA basketball, right? And I see all these good players, right? Do the coach matter? Like, yeah, what? they matter. Well, of course they matter. Like, um, NBA, you know, you kind of, yeah, you know, you're more like in a private super, supervisory role, you know what I mean? Because, like, the players hold so much weight, you know what I mean? But... At the same time, you got to be able to manage all those egos and things like that and still try to get them to play together. That, and that's, that's part of coaching. You know what I mean? So, okay, so talk about your level, the college level. Do the, what, what's a good coach? And what is a good coach? I mean, of course, good coach is like people look at you as a good coach if you win. You know what I mean? Like they don't look at the losers as a good coach. So you okay. got to figure out how to win. And, I mean, to figure out how to win is usually you got to get your teams to play hard, play together, play smart. And I think that you can, you can tell right away – if a team is doing that or not, you can tell right away if a team is disorganized, you know, kind of like just helps a skelter, mm-hmm. or you can team, see if a team is pretty intentional about different things, you know, like you, you can see them like running plays, you can see them trying to get the ball to whoever, you know, you can see it right away, you can see if they're playing defense, you know, um, I think to the naked eye, you can see right away, like, are they doing these things, you know what I'm saying, or are they not doing these things, and that usually puts you in a good, good coach category if your teams are doing that because there are teams that, you know, aren't doing that. And usually those teams are the losing teams, to be honest with you, but the teams that's not doing that. Now, are you like a, a father figure to some of the kids? Like, can, like, say, for instance, like, can a student call you in the middle of the night and, like, I got a girl pregnant? Yeah, they do it all the time. I mean, <laughs> like, so it's not in the middle of the night because, like, you know, middle of the night, they know, like, unless it's, like, like some dire emergency, like, this could wait to 9 in the morning, man. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, but, like, yeah, there's been situations that people have called in the middle of the night about different things, but there's been situations, you know, just like that. Like, um, I can't say total father, father figure because a lot of these kids, you know, it's like a, um, a misconception, you know, that I think people have. Um, that, that, that thing is changing, you know. There's, like, a lot of times people say, like, they don't have their fathers around or whatever, whatever, but there's a lot of these kids that got um, their fathers around, two-parent two parent homes or whatever the case is. So, like, they don't really need me to be their father, but at the same time, they're around, they are around me more during the school year than I did, than their father or mother. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, they, 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 I take on that role now, even though I'm not taking on it, like, you know, to a full extent, I'm taking on that role for, like, somebody, like, an older figure to talk to. So you think that's the misconception of the black athlete is that we don't have yeah, both our parents? Question. Yeah. Okay. But I question, no one thinks that people think that their fathers are around, think it's all about mothers and stuff like that or whatever. And there's way more fathers involved with these athletes now than maybe it, maybe it was before or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, but there's way more fathers involved. Like, way more fathers involved. Sometimes, sometimes too involved either way. You know what I mean? Like John Moran? Might be too involved. They think their kid's the next LeBron and, you know, blah, blah, blah. They, you know, but it's like... There's way more. There's way more parents. Two, there's way more two parent homes um, these days. So, do the parents ever tell to tell you how they want you to play their child? Like, listen, I want you to make him uh, the point guard, or I want him to be the, the center. Do they ever tell to tell you how they want you to? What no, they want? Not really. Not really. I mean, you kind of tell. You kind of dictate that narrative. You kind of tell them, you know, like because it's like you know, I recruit. You know, I'm recruiting you because you, you're a guard. I need a guard. You know, what I mean, I recruit. Okay. You know, forward, you know so okay. No, yeah, you don't really, I don't really deal with that. Have to deal with that. Okay. Now, now being that this is a old man, married man podcast, we got to go a little personal. Okay. Now we both took some losses uh, in the two thousands. In 06, I lost my mom. Um, I don't know if I ever publicly. Uh, I know I didn't publicly thank you, but I remember I almost couldn't come into my mom's funeral. 
I was standing so far away from the casket. And I remember at the end, you basically took me and walked me up to the casket and say, Johnny, you gotta do this. You gotta do this. And I remember um, I kissed my mom that one last time. I remember that. And I just wanna tell you uh, publicly, I appreciated that. And sure. in 2011, you lost your mom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember it was the Father's Day. I went to see her in the Jamaica hospital. And I didn't know that was the last time I was going to see her. Because she was okay. She was okay. That, that, when I went to see her in Jamaica hospital the Father's Day, she was okay. Uh -huh. And the next day, she was gone. So we took some hits five years apart. Um, I'm going to talk about, uh, you say you have a son. You and his mom uh, were your high school sweethearts or college sweethearts? College. College. And um, what happened with that? It just didn't work out? Or too young? Yeah, it just didn't work out. I mean, we spent a lot, a lot of years together, but I think that, you know, over time, you grow apart, you know what I'm saying? It's a different situation. So, and then um, I think that probably it was, um, it was probably already already done to a certain extent, but I think we, we probably continued more because of him. You know, mm -hmm. like continue. We probably continue two two years longer than we probably should have. You try been. try to make it work. Yeah. So, um, you know, it, it, you know, such is life. I mean, you know, hey, things happen, things don't happen. You know. So, are you still um, friends? Uh, I guess that we we friends. You know, but we're not. There's no. We're not enemies. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, so uh, I can't say like, yo, I call up and like, you know, kicking it like, yo, hey, what's up? What's going on or whatever? And I can't say she do the same thing, but. You know, if um, you know, she will. You know, wish happy birthdays and you know, happy Mother's Day, happy Father's, you know, stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it's real, real cordial. Mm -hmm. you know? so, so, um, she was okay and, when when uh, your son wanted to come live with you. She was okay with that. Yeah, she was okay with it. Uh, which was, you know, a lot of people don't. Um, a lot of people uh, can't believe that. You know, <laughs> you know, for real, they can't. Like, they're like, yo, you ain't have to like. Fight her, take her to court, and I was like, nah, I have to do none of that. You know. How did you do that? You just said, hey, uh, can Justin come live with me? And it was simple. Nah, I, I think we just. I don't think I even asked. I just kind of told her like, yo, he needs to come live with me because like, um, for what he's trying to do, you know what I mean? Like for what, you know, like like when he like you know like there was a point that you could see that he really started like getting basketball. You know what I'm saying? And mm. then like, um, for what he was what he what he said he wanted to do because he said he always said he wanted to be a college basketball player. He never. He never said he wanted to go to the NBA. Like he's never got to that point yet. I, I, like I think, you know, I think sometimes his confidence wavers a little bit. Like um, even though you just you talk about the boxing, I think the confidence on the court. Like sometimes you know, like like he ain't scared to play nobody. Mm -hmm. But I still think that he sometimes there's a little self doubt about what he could truly do on that basketball. So right, I mean, still at this point, as good as he is right now, you are saying that he no, definitely self doubt. It's definitely self doubt. Like, oh okay. Like, I, I tell him all the time like that if. If you would get away with this, like I, I probably gonna take him to a, a performance anxiety coach. You know what I mean? Because like I, that's not my p profession. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to find one. Like to be honest with you, I'm trying, I'm trying to find one. So like I think that if if he gets over that performance anxiety sometimes, like or like mm -hmm. self doubt, he would be, he would be a monster. Like I mean, because like you know he became twenty sometimes thirty. You know like the way he is now. But it's like if he would get away that get get rid of that block, like he would be a he would be a savage <laughs> on the court. Oh, yeah. so I thought he, I, you know, like, he's 15, right? Yeah. I thought he had that attitude, we go into the league. Like, I thought, like, you know, in his head already, he, he's... Nah, not at all. Oh. He just said he wanted to be a college basketball player. He said that's what he wanted because, you know, I think he's seen, like, you know, I took, I took him to my Hall of Fame ceremony, so he saw, like, you know, what his dad did, mm -hmm. and then he around these college basketball players. So he told me, like, you want to play college? You want to play college basketball? I, I want to play college basketball or whatever. So, like... That's what he's talking about. I think. I think eventually, you know. But that's what I say. Like that's where that that full confidence comes in. That because it's like a kid now, with, like you said, with, like I'm going to the league, but you don't know talk about no league. You don't talk about no league, like ever. Now you know my grandson's a baller, right? Yeah. Okay. Now when I see clips of him, I always take him back. We go into the league. Like in his head, I don't really know if he's like, I'm going to the NBA, but I think he. 
assumes his talent will at least get him to college. Yeah, and it should. I mean, I think that with him too, he got to go to a situation too that's like he, you know, because he's still small. You know, he got to grow too. Yeah, he got to grow. Because I mean, he like what, like five nines right now, five ten maybe. Maybe five ten with sneakers. Yeah, maybe right. Yeah. yeah so like you know, um, see, I'm talking about my son. My son already six feet. You know what I mean? But it's like I'm talking to him. He, he he still need a couple more inches. So it's the same yeah. thing, kind of like going on the you know on the on the flip side with that too. But um. And JJ is going to be eighteen in. Two months. Yeah, he about to be a, a senior in high school, right? Yeah, and he's still only he's still under six feet. Yeah, so yeah. like that's you know I tell people all the time, man, genetics means something too now. Like 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 you know like people think that yo you know you could just uh, you know it's all about talent. Yeah, it's talent, but if you five nine and I could find somebody to do the same thing at six three, I'm taking a six three person. Of course. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. All day, every day. You know. You so, can't teach height. Nah, so yeah. it's like if they can do the exact same you think you could do. I'm going with the six three, and it's, and it's not saying that you can't play, but it's like that guy is a little bigger than you. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like it's just what it is. When do when do you think kids stop like that growing? Like like how long? How much long he got? Like he be eighteen in, in two months. How much more growing he got? How many more years? I mean, it depends, man. Because like you know, I, I tell people, I tell people all the time. Like I hope my son doesn't have like my genes. I grew I grew three inches in college. Oh, okay. So he still got time. Yeah, but I hope he doesn't have that gene. Because it's like, you need, like, by the time I do three inches, it was when my career's over. Like, you know what I'm saying? Oh, like, okay. okay. You know, like, hopefully he could grow it now, you know, um, and, and that will help change the situation, you know, for him, you know? Now, we talked about uh, your mother, my aunt Jenny. Yeah. Your, your, your dad, Bill, was he, a, was he a basketball player? No. Basketball but he player. was tall as hell, though. Yeah, he's 6'4". Yeah. So you, you surpassed him. So there's a chance Justin may surpass you in height. Nah, I don't know, man. I was I was a lot closer to, to, to my father like earlier in life than than that. Like I was already like when I got to, to junior high school, I was already like six two when I got to junior high school. Like, six one, six two. So how tall is Justin's mom? Yeah, that's what kills. I mean, she's five four. I mean, oh, okay. That's yeah, dig, she, dig with the problem. Yeah, so he, she, he ain't got a shot. Like he like he the max that he could probably get is probably six four, probably six. Maybe, yeah, maybe six four and a half or something like that. That's about it, though. Like, now you you know my grandson's mom. She's really small. Yeah. I, I don't think she's five four. Yeah, I don't think she's five four. So even as tall as my son is, because my son is taller than me, so I'm gonna give Jr. six two maybe. Yeah. If if JJ can get to six feet, that's probably be good. If he yeah, could just make, he probably, just, he, he probably tapped out if he could get to that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Maybe, it ain't, you know, it ain't no more, but so. You know, now, do you have any aspirations to be an NBA coach? Nah, not at all. Not really. I mean, like, you know, if I had to do it because I need a job, yeah. But, it's like, I mean, I really have no, no real aspirations of doing that at this point, really. Maybe when I, you know, maybe later on in life, I don't know. You know, anything can change, you know. But mm-hmm. as of right now, um, no. No? So you satisfied with, like, teaching the children? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, you were married at one time. Yeah. How long did that last? <laughs> the, the, the marriage did last? Yes. Like six months, probably. Six months? Yeah, five months, six months. Damn. That was quick. Yeah. Do you think you would get married again? Yeah, I would. I, I, like, I never let one situation in life deter another situation. You know what I'm saying? Because like, the next time you do it, it could be better, you know what I mean? Like just like I think sometimes, like, um, you know, and it's not, it's not, and it is, this is not me, but like some people have children, and then like it ain't really work out, you know, the way they wanted to do with that child. So they like they're like, ah, oh, you know, never have a child. <laughs> like, like I ain't doing that again. Yeah, but it's mm-hmm. like you know, maybe the next one will work out, you know. Mm-hmm. So, so, but I, and I figure I, I'm saying the same way with when it comes to the, um to marriage, like. Although the first one ain't work out the way it, you know you would envision a marriage working out to be, um, it ain't gonna deter me from from uh, saying I'm never gonna get married. Now I ain't gonna say I'm gonna be one of guys to get married three and four times. So I ain't saying that. Mm-hmm. But I got I got one more in me, and then after that I might tap out if it don't work. But. So what was your takeaway from that? Like, did you in a short six months did you learn anything like to take to your next marriage? I mean, that's a short marriage. Six months is short. Yeah, yeah I mean, I think the, the thing that, that you learn, um, 
Uh, so not spending all this money on a wedding, I guess. How much money you spend on a wedding? Huh? How much money you spend on a wedding? Like thirty-seven thousand. Oh my god. Woo. Yeah, so I, I wish I could have got that back. Because, I, I mean, I could have did that anything. Like, my, my, my son, he in private school. I, that's three years of a, a private school. I could have gone through his whole high school career almost. Wow. You know, 37 grand. Yeah, so like. For six months. Like, yeah, so I probably, you know, wouldn't necessarily do that again. Um, But, I mean, you know, I can't say I, I learned a whole bunch from the situation. I mean, it's situa it's situations and situations, you know, it's just. Mm -hmm. Things, things happen, so I can't say I learned a whole bunch from it that to take to the next, you know, the next situation. I can't say, you know, I can't read. So no more children in your future? If you do get married again, no more children? Yeah, yeah no more children. I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, I'll be 44 this year. Later on this year, I'll be 44. You know, I ain't really trying to be like uh, like my, my parents was because, like, I think that um, my parents were so old, like, it was a disconnect. You know what I mean? Like, like you know, like... Um, you know, my parents, you know, could, could almost be like my grandparents to a certain regard, mm -hmm. you know. So some of the things that me and Justin do together um, now with, you know, me being 43, him being 15, like my dad could never do. You know, yeah. my dad would, could never go play one-on-one -on -one with me, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like, even though that wasn't his sport, so we probably would have never did it anyway because it wasn't his sport, but mm -hmm. um, he could never, like, really go rebound for me, per se. You know, my mm -hmm. dad was 54 when, he went, when I came out the Boom, he was 54. You know what I'm saying? Damn, I didn't know he was that old. I know. Listen, I'm an old dad. I'm an old dad. I got an eight-year-old. So, yeah. I'm an old dad. But, um, I didn't know your dad was that old when you was born. He was 54? He was 54. So, like, at Justin's age, he would have been 69. Like, he ain't, there is no one-on-one -on -one at 69. You know Hell no. Saying? Hell so, no. So, like, like I said, things I do, and like, even, like, the stuff that, like, you know, like, I don't really listen to everything just to listen to, but, like, some stuff you listen to, like, I could, I listen to, you know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. like, there's something relatable in that regard, too. Um, you know, it's just different things, like, it's, you know, more relatable than it might have been with my parents. You know, yeah. like, um, you know, like, like, I always tell people, always, like, you know, like, I don't have no, just no, no problem, you know, I was no problem with my parents, and I like that, or mm -hmm. whatever. Uh, even my mom, who, you know, who was around way more than my, my dad was, but at the same time, um, I can't say like 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 me and Justin like kind of like close to like close to I can't say we truly best friends but we close to it you know what I'm saying like we like that's my that's my little homie but you know yeah. like, now now you know I you know I, I you know and I put the foot down on him anytime you know all the time too but uh -huh. like we can sit down and talk and chill and play video games together and, and be like, open yeah, and be yeah, open like that like mm -hmm. my mom and my and they were never my homies you know like they yeah. were never like because they they couldn't be they were too old like they couldn't understand the yeah stuff doing, different era. You know? It was like way different eras, way yeah, different eras. So it's like they, you know, and I can't be mad at them for that because they, they just wasn't they, that wasn't what it was. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, I ain't mad at nobody, but I'm just saying, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so, so you said you you say you're not gonna do. You was like, I'm not gonna do that to my kid. I'm not gonna have a kid at 44. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. And then now also like with Justin, you know, a couple more years he out the house. Like you know, he gonna go to college. Or whatever, you know, like, like I said, whether he go to basketball scholarship or just go to college as a student, he gonna go to college. You know what I mean? And mm. it's like the house is free. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I don't have nobody like bring up the rim. You know? Like, yeah, yeah. So you say, so you saying if you was to meet a young lady, right, that's still fertile, that's younger than you, and she said, "I want a kid. I want your son. I want your daughter," you would say, "No way." Yeah, I can't do it, man. You say no way. Wow. Wow. So, man. So, in other words, Justin's the one and only. Yeah. And, uh, none before him and none to come. He better be a star. He better be. He's one on, he's one, on one. Mm -hmm. Now, do you <laughs> think, like, I know you're an only child. He's an only child. Do you think, like, you missed out on anything not having siblings? I think you miss out on, like, uh, immediate camaraderie, you know what I'm saying, companionship, like, you know, get through um, probably problem solving, too, because I know, you know, sometimes we got, when you got siblings, you know, you got to figure out, like, who, who about to watch this TV? It's like, that might be something small that people don't realize, but it's like, it helps your problem solving adversity skills. Yeah, it do. Like, it ain't, only adversity Justin faces, like, when I'm mad at him, you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. like, yo, 
you can't play your video game, you know, because I'm mad, you know, whatever, whatever. Like, so he got to figure out how to navigate that space to, to get back a good graces, you know what I'm saying? But, like, he ain't got to be trying to figure out, like, yo, I can't watch TV because my sister want to watch TV. Or exactly. Watch, you know? Exactly. So, he ain't got to do that. But, um, you know, I don't think I really missed out on a whole, whole bunch because, you know, even with him, like, um, he got enough friends and stuff like that that, like, yeah, they're not his siblings, but it's like, it ain't like he in a, it ain't like he uh, sheltered either, though. You know, mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, hell, from, from playing basketball, he meet all walk people all, like you know, like the people that's on his AAU team. They ain't come, they ain't come from the same situation he come from. Yeah, it's like you know, you get chance to meet them people, you know, and, and like it, it kept it helps mold you as a person, you know, a little bit. Mm-hmm. More, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So it's like um, he's getting the best of best of both worlds, you know, with that. So do he like it better being down here with you, down in Virginia? Yeah, well, I got a question. If he was, if he was on this call, he would say 100. Like, oh, okay. Yeah. I gotta tell you, I love that basketball court. Oh yeah, that, that basketball court is hot, man. I love the colors. I love the colors, man. That's hot. Yeah. Do he now? Do he actually play on it? Do y'all actually play on it, or you just got it there? No, all the time. We played yesterday. Oh, okay. Right, played again today. <laughs> okay, so now for the rest of the summer, what are you doing? What's your plans for the rest of the summer? You do you go on vacation? Uh, after all this recruiting stuff is over, I mean, like, when do you go to? Just, I know your birthday's coming up in June, so when do you go and just relax? I mean, I got uh, some recruiting calls coming up. Uh, well, I got a recruit. I think I told you I got a recruit coming to campus in a, actually in a little bit coming. So, um, so the, we got we got a recruit each day of the week this this week coming to campus, and then. Um, you know, I just got other stuff going on, but uh, like as far as vacation, like yeah, around my birthday I might go somewhere. Um, so you know, we'll see. Cancun, somewhere like that? No, nah, I'm probably not there. Um, actually, I, I lost my passport in the move, so I can't find my passport. So I ain't going nowhere out the country right now. Now, what degree? Uh, you you got a degree in business, right? Yeah. Okay, tell me what you said. You came and seen me at my job recently in Florida a couple of months ago. Yeah. Tell me what you said again about saving money, what you should do with your money when you get paid? Oh, 50, 30, um, 20. Um, I think, you know, depending on how, you know, what you, I mean, most of the time people make a good, you know, decent amount of salary, especially when you get older, but it's like um, 50, 30, 20 rule is um, 50% of your salary, of your, of your net, you know, money should go to the household, you know, so hopefully, and like that's almost like setting a budget for yourself that you shouldn't be spending more than fifty percent of your salary you for know, your household. Now. For your household, yeah, right? so like if you if you spending more than fifty percent of your, of your, then you probably living above your means. You right? need to downsize. Huh? You need to downsize a little bit. Yeah, like mm-hmm. you, you're probably living above your means if you're spending mm-hmm. more than fifty percent of your household uh, of your money on your household. Like I mean, household and, and like household stuff is like. You know, not only your rent or your mortgage, but like um, your light bill, your gas bill, your cable bill, your, your you know, your cars are kind of in, in that too. Okay, so your car note is inside the household. Yeah. Your car note like, should be like, in that that fifty percent. Really like your bills, I should say. 50% okay. Should be like your bills, really. Okay. Like, so and and I say household because most people most people bills <laughs> associated with their house. Yeah. Really. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, like so like your bills, you know, and then the thirty another thirty percent, um. Could be for you to do whatever you want to do. Like that's like your clothes, you know. Um, Tricking money. Yeah, <laughs> if you are, yeah, that, mm-hmm. that's what you do. You know what I'm saying? And, mm-hmm. and um, you know, your entertainment. You know what I mean? Disposable so, like, income. Huh? Disposable income. Yeah, yeah. That you could just that you could throw away that thirty percent, and mm-hmm. you know you're okay. You're not tripping. You know, and then the twenty percent you go to your savings. You know, so you can have money saved. You know what I mean? Like um, it's hard enough to save money. You know, and but it's like, and people, I know people got to touch their savings. You know. Time to time, you touch the savings for different things or, or bigger projects, you mm-hmm. know, or whatever. Because you know, sometimes, sometimes you ain't gonna have five thousand dollars in your in your thirty percent, you know, thing. You know, what mm-hmm. I mean, to like say, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go buy whatever, you know. For this. So you got to touch the savings, but at least the twenty percent allows you to save, you know, something. You know, some people try to save more than that, and it's like it's hard to save more than that. You mm-hmm. know, what I mean, it's hard to save. You know, some people tell me they want to save fifty percent of their check. How you gonna do that? You know, like I mean. Unless you make it, you know, like we're talking about a million dollars, you know. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, yeah, you can save 50% of your check. Then, you know, easily you save 50% of your check, you mm-hmm. know. But for the average person, you can't um, save 50% of your, your check. It's hard to do, you know. So, like, if you can save 20%, it, it usually puts you in a good space.
because the thing that I always um, see and, and uh, kind of almost brainwash my head is that like like eighty six percent of Americans, if they have a four hundred dollar emergency, can't can't do nothing with it right now. Exactly. Now let me let me say this: We grew up in Southside Jamaica. You said something, one hundred fifty seventh. Uh, Hamels Projects. You're a long way from there right now. Right? Yeah. Um, I seen the house. Beautiful house. I seen your vehicle. Beautiful vehicle. Vehicles, my bad. Plural, <laughs> right? Do you still... I wouldn't say be cheap, but are you still very careful with your money? Yeah, well, of course Easily, all the time. Like, um, even, you know, I, like, you talk about the house, like, it took me, like, a, like this wasn't my first house. You know, I bought a different house. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, um, you know, I probably could have bought a house similar to this. It actually would have been cheaper back then before the market flipped. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, but I didn't do it. You know, and, like, my sister, I mean, I was sister coach, um, my, well, not mine, but the women's basketball coach was a good friend of mine. He always was like, yo, man, you can be cheap. You can buy whatever, you know, buy this house, buy that house. And I'm like, but what? I don't need to buy the house, you know. Like I don't have a whole bunch of people living in my, you know, like like that in my house. So it's mm -hmm. like um, I just leave it alone. But it's like um, the thing is, two things. One, I, I always think about. Um, I tell people, you know, that at, at forty three years old, you know, the years of me not having nothing still outweighs the years of me having something. Mm -hmm. So, so the majority of my brain is still about not having anything. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And you, and you like, I ain't going back there ever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's that's you know like it, like if it was flip like if I had if, if it, and I guess at some point it will become flip you know at some point you know what I mean but like right now it's like you know at, at 26 years old I was, I was living in Hamels at 26 years old mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. so like um, and that's why I was starting to get something because like you know like like you said um, I was doing the parties or whatever whatever and I was like saving money you know what I mean even I was living with my mom's in the projects but I was saving money you know by living with her and doing these parties so like so when I did get out like I was okay you know being able to get out of the situation mm -hmm. but um the, so like those those days still outnumber everything and then the other thing too is that when you when you coach it the, the profession is so fickle like like I think to be honest with you I think they overpay coaches and I, I tell people you know, I tell people like I, I'm not you know I'm transparent but I think some people gotta be real with themselves like I get paid a lot of money and coaches you know division one coaches that is get paid a lot of money to be a basketball coach, it's like, yes, we're, we're touching people's lives and maybe, and maybe in some regards saving some lives, right? Yep. But we're not directly like we're not like a neurosurgeon or like a brain surgeon or a heart surgeon that's which like really like directly like saving somebody's life with a heart transplant or whatever. Mm. And like in some regards, we get paid way more than them people, you know. So it's like, like we're really overpaid in a in, in certain regard, you know. Now, granted. Is it relative to like what we what we bring into the institution and what money we bring to the school? Like, because like when you know, I mean, you know, it's a, it's a tournament. Like, you know, a couple of years ago, like you know, we uh, well, two years ago now, and then even last year we went like between those two years, I brought in six point six million dollars to the institution. You know, hey. and so it's like, yeah, I guess I should be getting a piece of that. You know, what I'm saying? you should, you should. Yeah, so so yeah, it's all relative, but also in the grand scheme of things, like you know, with basketball coaches too. You know, so like. But I also think, though, that they overpay you, too, because your basketball coaching career could be very limited. You know, I've been fortunate enough to be coaching 10 years. Like, 10 years is like, as a head coach, that is. Mm -hmm. It's almost like you got to be having real success to do that because people be getting fired up three years, four years, two years, you know, five years, you know, something like that. So it's like I'll, I'll, pass, I'll pass all, like, the metrics to say that you can't do it. You know, mm -hmm. you're not good at it, you know. So, but I say that to say, like, okay, if somebody's paying you five hundred thousand dollars a year, right? Yeah, that's a really inflated salary. That's a really, really good salary for for the average person. Really, yes, good. yes, sir, yes, sir. I don't think nobody mad at five hundred thousand dollars a year. Right? Yes, sir. But your contract is five years. You know what I mean? Like usually, sometimes four years, right? Mm -hmm. So yes, you're going to be able to make two and a half million dollars in four years, two million dollars in four years, or whatever, right? But if you get fired and you're not good, that might be the last time you actually get five hundred thousand dollars in your life. Hmm. There's no, there's no bounce. There's no, there's not a, a, a direct bounce back to five hundred thousand dollars. Like they're like, oh, you suck, and now sometimes you're able to get another job, like a assistant coaching job, something like that. You might make a couple dollars or whatever. You know what I mean? But 
you might not have a coach again in basketball. Now you gotta go get a, a regular job. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Which is cool. Like there's nothing wrong with a regular job. I tell people, you know, like I tell people, man, like I'm so like um, down to earth when it comes to stuff like like you know, sixty, seventy thousand dollars job, fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars stuff. Those are good jobs. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Those are good quality. When we grew jobs. up, when we grew up, that is a good job. Yeah, that's a good <laughs> job, right? UPS, when, that's a good job. When, when somebody comes from five hundred thousand back to sixty, they're like, "Yo, yeah, that's a drop." What just happened. That's a drop. You know, when, that's a drop. When, when you realize, but, but you gotta realize that though, those are decent jobs, though. But it's like you've been inflated so much, you know what I mean? That now you come back and you can't handle it. So it's like I think they overpay us because they need us. You know, they, I think they will hope that you do save some money. So like, if you do come back down to like in quotes a regular job, right now. It won't feel so crazy, mm-hmm. you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, cause like you should have a decent savings, you know. And if they have, listen to your twenty uh, thirty, was it again twenty thirty or whatever? 50, 50, 30, 20. If they listen to that, they, they should have some money if they have to drop. Yeah. I mean, you, you should you should be able to come back with at least six figures in your bank account yeah. after the, after have to get fired. You know what I'm saying? So now you have that stash. If you do do a, you know what, like I said, quote unquote, a regular job or whatever. Mm-hmm. Now you still you, you might not be living the same, but you you should be hurting like like that. So I think they, they I think they overpay coaches because like your careers could be like open within a flash. You know what I'm saying? Like if now, you win these games, people care. And I know when you have to school, people ask you about your graduation rate and stuff like that. And you know, man, hey, and yeah, you did graduate these kids because um, most of these kids ain't gonna play you know play no basketball after they, they college. You know, only yeah. no no real basketball. They are gonna make some real crazy money. You know what I mean? So they gonna have to get a degree, but. No one ever, no one ever gets fired for having a hundred percent graduation rate. Or you know what I'm saying? Like they, like, like. Oh, I'm just, I'm gonna rephrase that. No one ever keeps their job for having a hundred percent graduation rate. Oh, you okay. Know what I mean? Like people, people can have a hundred percent graduation rate, but if you ain't winning those games, you out of, you out of here. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. it's like you better win those basketball games. And, now, and so, now I gotta ask you this. I know the way you grew up. You know where I grew up. We didn't have much when we were growing up. Being that you have, at this point, and you have one child, yeah, Justin, can, is you spoiling his ass? Like, is he a spoiled brat? Do he got, like, every Jordan that ever came out? Do he uh, got... Nah? I think, I think sometimes I got to wonder if he's my kid, for real, because, like, 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 his demeanor is totally different than, like, mine. Like, like anything Justin has... has I have bought for him. He has never asked me for anything. Like, all he has ever asked me for is video games. That's all he hold up, like, hold up, hold up. Your son knows his dad is the head coach of Norfolk State basketball. Yeah. Making a whole lot of money. I ain't going to ask you how much money you make. Making a whole lot of money. We just say that, right? Yeah. He don't come to you on a regular basis. I need. I want this. I want that. I want nah, this. Never. Never. Like, like, anything he has, like, you know, like like if it's a Jordan or like something like that, it'd be something that like, like I've seen that come out and I'm like, yo, all right, well I ain't already wearing no pink Jordans or whatever. You know, like that might be that might be hot compared to you know for the youth. So like I'm a Yeah, the young kids him. wear pink. The young kids yeah, wear pink. So I'm gonna buy it for him. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Or whatever. I'm gonna buy him these jeans or this stuff because like I see like this is what like is popular. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Whatever, you know what I mean? So but he don't ask me for nothing. He has never asked me for clothes in his life. Like Wow. Like, and, and the thing even like two, no, maybe not. Yeah, two Christmases ago, not last week, but Christmas before that, right? This is, this is a true conversation. Like I asked him, I was like, "Hey, man, you know, it's Christmas coming up, man. What you want for Christmas, man? What's up? What you want? What, what you want?" And he, this is the exact words he said. He said, "Yo, I got a PS5, which, which he did. Like, two, yeah, he already had it. Like, it's so crazy. But even with that, like, it's still hard to get a PS5. But like, yeah, my my little son just got one for his birthday last week, uh, last month." Yeah, it's yeah. still crazy. That guy was like still hard, but like, mm-hmm. so he had a PS5 for like when it was really, really hard. Like I had to mm-hmm. hook up to somebody that got me, you know, PS5. Mm-hmm. So he was like, "Yo, I got, I got a video game. This is, this is, I got a house to live in. I got a basketball court outside." He's like, "What else do I need? What do I need?" You know what, man? That's beautiful. Yeah, that's, that's beautiful, crazy. and that's a testament to his mom too. Good raising, because you know some moms. I, I know you only got one son's mom, but there's some baby mamas, right? Yeah. Would be on the phone telling this son, tell him you want this, tell him you want that, tell him you want this, tell him you want that. So that, that's a beautiful thing, man. Yeah, so like with, with him, it's like, um, 
Nah, I don't really gotta worry about those things like with, with him. Like like I said, you know, he got he got some stuff and stuff like that, but it's like it's really stuff that, that I have bought him. Like even to this like like for real, like sometimes like I have to go in his room and kinda like survey his stuff to see like What he need? Yeah, what he need or is, is mm. it still in good condition or whatever, you know, like, like even I have to tell him like sometimes I was like, yo man, you know, I mean, you know, he doesn't slow down his growth spurt now, but like mm. he was going through like, you know, different spurts and I'm like Yo, you don't wear a size small no more, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. you, it's okay. You just throw it, throw it away. Or like, you know, or like, you know, maybe, you know, sometimes we, we, we in the past, we have given it away to different people or whatever. It was like, I'm like, you can just, it's, it's okay to throw it away. Mm-hmm. You know, we just got to just go get, we'll, we'll go get some more, like, to get you your right size. Like, you shouldn't be wearing, like, if you're a medium, you shouldn't be wearing a small. No Yo, so maybe, like, later on in the day when you see him, you, you pick him up from school, right? Yeah, like, oh, yeah. maybe you should just say, uh, Justin, I'm rich. <laughs> maybe, maybe he don't know that. Maybe, maybe he's confused. <laughs> nah, he, uh, he, he, nah, he, he, he understand. He understand. I think, I think there's some way, somehow, like um, he, he did his own deductive reasoning to understand that he's in a better situation than a lot of people. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like without even like talking about it. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Like, I think that he knows. Um, some way somehow, you know that he. I mean, like I say, it's just it's, a, it's definitely weird sometimes because he don't really act like seven nothing, you know what I mean? And um, you know, that's a beautiful and, thing. And that could change eventually, but he don't really act for nothing though. That's a beautiful thing. Yeah, he don't act for nothing. Yo, Coach Jones, cousin Rob, boo. <laughs> I appreciate you for taking out yeah. the time. I know it took man. It took like almost two months to even make it happen. And I want to let you know I appreciate you. I'm proud of you. I talk about you all the time. Uh, I'm still waiting for a shirt. Yeah, yeah, I got you. You know, I don't want no sweatshirt. It's too high in Florida, but I don't want no sweatshirt. Yeah, I, I forgot about the shirt. Bro. Yeah, send me any shirt. You can send me a shirt like that one. Something like yeah. that. But, uh, man, hopefully, uh, I don't know if you're ever coming to Florida again anytime soon, but I'm supposed to be coming up to Virginia this summer. So, man, I'm going to come by and check out your house. I heard, now I don't know if this is true, but I heard you have a refrigerator in your truck. Is that true? Oh, yeah, yeah, I do. In yeah. the rain truck, yeah. You have a refrigerator mm-hmm. in the truck. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now, what do you put in it? I mean, what is, you mean you just throw water? It just, it just, it's just a big enough, like, drink, so, like, you got sandwiches or something like that. It ain't like you can't put, like, a whole turkey in there. No, like that. Oh, okay, okay, okay. No, okay. I, like, I, I want to come. A, a, more like, a, I guess, a cooling box or refrigerator. I mean, it's a, yeah, it's a refrigerator to a certain extent, but it's like a, a cool, like, it keeps everything, like, cool. Like, so if you got, so if you got drinks, you can just, you know, you keep it cool the whole ride. Really. Uh, okay. I'm going to come check it out, and I'm going to come check yeah. out your house, and uh, hopefully, man, I see you soon, man. Yeah, for sure. Thank you.